Eric Bloodaxe, the Keenslayer. Eric Bloodaxe, also known as Eirik Haraldson, was a 10th century Norse king. He was King Harald Fairhair of Norway's favorite of 20 sons. There are differing accounts as to how Eric's nickname, Blood Axe or Bloody Axe, came about. It is not known whether it was a name his contemporaries gave him or whether it was attached to his legend by authors of sagas long after his death. The first evidence of the name comes from the Agrip, and in Latin translation the Sanguini Securis in the Historia Norwegi. The saga's explanation for the name refers to the tale of Eric slaying his half-brothers in a ruthless struggle to consolidate his rule over Norway. Theodoricus gave Eric the similar nickname, Fragrum Interfector, Killer of Brothers, whereas Fagerskina claims the name Blood Axe was a result of Eric's violent reputation as a Viking raider. So, what really happened? Eric Haraldsson, nicknamed Eric Blood Axe, was a Norwegian ruler who lived during the 10th century. He was the king of Norway, and later became the king of Northumbria. But, we have to remember that the Norse sources are in the form of sagas, which means that both legend and history are mingled together. According to the sagas, Eric was Harald's most beloved of his supposed twenty sons. At the age of twelve, Eric was given five long ships by his father, and thus began his career as a Viking. This is a young age for someone to go Viking, because this usually didn't happen before you were fifteen or sixteen. Eric first sailed eastwards, where he raided the coasts of Denmark, Friesland, and Saxland for three years. He then sailed to the west, and raided Scotland and the area around the Irish Sea for four years. The Fagerskinna suggests that Eric gained the nickname of Blood Axe due to his brutal Viking raids during this period. The sagas also mention that Eric was married to Gunhild, who is generally depicted as an evil witch. The 12th century Icelandic historian Snorri Sturluson wrote that Gunhild's father was Osser Tote, from Helogaland in northern Norway. In any case, Gunhild exerted a strong influence on her husband. In the sagas, Harald Fairhair is recorded to have unified Norway. Many modern historians, however, agree that Harald's kingdom was in fact much smaller, and was probably limited to the west and southwest of Norway. Harald did not have enough land to divide among his sons. Nonetheless, some sources recorded that Harald managed to divide his kingdom among all his sons, making each of them Jarl. Eric, however, was appointed king, and therefore ruled over his siblings. This was unusual, because Eric was not the firstborn son, who normally inherited his father's title. But Eric was his father's favorite son, becoming even more brutal than his father was, who had made many people leave Norway for Iceland because of his harsh rule. And this was of course, where Eric learned his future brutality, from his father. At strife with his half-brothers, Eric brutally killed Ragnvald, ruler of Hadeland on his father's orders, and Bjorn Farman, ruler of Vestfold. Some texts maintain that towards the end of his life, Harald allowed Eric to reign together with him and when Harald died, Eric succeeded him to the throne. But, when Harald died it soon destroyed whatever arrangements he made for his sons. Eric slaughtered the combined forces of his half-brothers Olaf and Sigrod, and gained full control of Norway. In contrast to the Fagerskinna, the Agrip states that Eric earned the nickname Blood Axe as he had murdered five of his brothers. It is unclear how many brothers and half-brothers Eric killed, or indeed how many brothers he had. Eric is the second king of Norway. At the time, however, Eric's younger and famous half-brother Hawken had been staying at the West Saxon court, having been sent there to be reared as foster son to King Æthelstan. Eric's rule was reputedly harsh and despotic and so he fell rapidly out of favor with the Norwegian nobility. At this propitious time, his brother Hawken returned to Norway, found a nobility eager to accept him as king instead, and ousted Eric, who fled to Britain. 
Heimskringla specifies that Hawken owed his success in large part to Sigurd, Earl of Lade. Eric Bloodaxe crossed the North Sea and ravaged Scotland and England, among other places. Finally, the English king, probably Adelstein, offers Eric Northumbria. Eric says yes, and he was soon baptized. The Anglo-Saxon sources state that Eric was made king in 947 or 948 AD, several years after Athelstan's death, in defiance of Edard, Athelstan's son's claim to the throne. By making Eric their king, the Northumbrians may have hoped to gain independence from the Anglo-Saxons in the south, who had brought them under their control in 927 AD. Edard responded by invading and ravaging Northumbria. On his way back to the south, Edard's rearguard was attacked by Eric at Castleford and many lives were lost. Furious, the English king threatened to destroy Northumbria unless they submitted to his rule. This time, the Northumbrians decided to appease Edard, and they expelled Eric. After Eric was expelled, the Northumbrians had accepted a new king, an Irish Viking by the name of Olaf Sytrixen. But, five years later, Eric returned to Northumbria and succeeded in overthrowing Olaf, thus becoming king of Northumbria once more. Whilst Eric's first reign in Northumbria lasted merely a year, this time he was able to occupy the throne for two years. Eventually, he fell out of favor with the Northumbrians again, and was expelled once more. This was the end for Eric Bloodaxe, he died not long after this. An account of Eric's death is provided by the Anglo-Saxon chronicler Roger of Wendover. According to this source, Eric was betrayed by a man named Osulf and was slain by Maccus at at the Battle of Steinmoor, in Cumbria in 954. But the exact place or how Eric died is disputed and according to local legend, the Ray Cross at Stainmore marks Eric's burial spot. In 1989, an excavation conducted at the site did not uncover any bones, lending support to the alternative interpretation that the Ray Cross is in fact a boundary stone marking the midpoint between Penrith and Barnard Castle. Therefore, it is possible that Eric's final resting place is somewhere else in Stainmore. I will upload more videos about Vikings and other important historical events, so please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. And if you liked this presentation, please like and share it too. And I hope to see you in the next one. Skal!